Hi everyone and welcome to the channel and welcome back to the monthly tips for FreeCAD but this time for May. We're looking at five FreeCAD tips that's going to make your life a lot easier and a lot quicker when using FreeCAD. So I hope you're enjoying these videos and let's have a look at these five tips for May. If you like what you've seen and you want to donate to the channel then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. So when constraining in the sketches, we can save time by adding constraints to multiple objects. So for these circles, they share a common constraint and that's the diameter. So I can select all of these, like so, and add the diameter constraint, and it will apply a quality constraint to all the circles, and one of them will be set to a diameter that we can set with a dating constraint. If I wanted to use some construction geometry in here, I can do the same. So let's say I added a circle in here, and set this circle to a certain size. Again, using a diameter. We'll set this to construction geometry. And then I'm going to take each of these circles by selecting the center points. And then I want to constrain those circles, those center points onto the construction geometry. Selected those first, and then selected the construction geometry. And I'm going to use a point and object constraint. As you can see, we've added that constraint just by selecting the constraint once. If we have an object such as this, it can be hard when we go into sketch on, say, this face. And you can see from the viewpoint that this wouldn't be on any of the standard planes, the standard viewpoints. When we create a sketch upon here, so create a sketch. We are placed flat face against that plane, so against the plane of that face. And you can see our navigation cube here. So if we start turning this to view other parts of the object, then getting back to this view, we can't really because we can't use the navigation. And we need a way of positioning ourselves flat against this face. So if we was tracing something on here, then we would want our view straight on. This is where this view comes in, the view sketch. If I click that, that places us straight onto that view as when we come into the sketch when we double clicked on it. We also got the home view, which can be activated by hitting the home key on the keyboard. And if I close that, this works in any of the workbenches where the 3D view is visible. So I can zoom right out place this over here. If I hit home, we're back to the standard view. Always be mindful of the topology when it comes to the application of your model. For instance, with this model in front of us, if I was to unwrap this face, then I would get a clean unwrap of a very simple object. But if I was to change the topology underneath, let's say taking the sketch and we had this rotated slightly like so then when we unwrap this we have an extra edge to cut these edges here this is the same when we're creating lofts so we've created the loft and our profiles had a different amount of edges. So for instance, let's add a square in here and then another sketch on the same plane. And we'll add the circle. Create some separation between the two. And I know there's two profiles in here, they'll be ruled loft. 
when I create the loft between these two, using the loft, and hit OK, we can see we get an additional edge here, where the edge of the circle hasn't lined up with the edge of the square. If we rotate that circle, And refreshed, you see that edge moves. So we can move that and refresh it each time to get this into position. Better still would be to sketch this so we have full control over the edges created. What's happened? That we've created a square with four edges, a circle that has one edge, and where they meet, it will create the vertical edge going through the object. So if I change the circular sketch, instead of circles, we used arcs. Take the arc, constrain to the center, constrain to the vertical axis, and then constrain it to the horizontal axis and work our way around. Now, word of advice, when we get to here, we have to be careful because if we click now, we get an invalid constraint. So I'm going to control Z that, and I'm going to get rid of this arc. So when we close arcs like this, we have to use the arc, come into the center point, attach it to our first point, and then drop it close. Hit escape, hit this point and this point, and make a tangent constraint. Hit close now we can see that we've got better edge and face arrangement for our loft. When we're designing more complex objects, especially in the part workbench, then it can be quite easy to lose elements such as sketches within the tree view. As they get nested in, such things as rule surfaces and slices, then they can be quite deep within that tree view. This is where groups are handy. If I create a group, if I click on the project, right click and create group. A group is created and we can take, say the sketch and drop it into the group. You notice the sketch doesn't move. If we look in the group, the sketch is here. If I press the spacebar on the sketch, the sketch where I dragged it from is controlled from that point as well. If I double click it, this will be the same sketch. Let's close that. The same if I try to delete this, it's going to warn me that I'm going to delete the sketch and what it's connected to, in this case, the extrude. So if I delete the group, click on it and hit delete and hit no, the sketch will stay where it is. Using the crew to keep sketches together means that we don't lose them in the tree view. When in the part design and creating profiles to loft through, it's important to create the profiles in a consistent manner. So for instance, if I create the outside of the profile first and then create the inside, Then I must do the same with our next profile. So I create the next profile on the XY plane and do the same outside and then inside. Just going to add some Z separation by clicking on the sketch, coming down to the attachment, position, changing the Z. And then when I loft through these, using the loft, you can see we get a consistent profile and a successful loft. Let's cancel that and change our profile. So I'm going to go to this profile and delete it and create the same sketch along the XY plane. And this time, I'm going to change it. So I'm going to go 
inside first and then outside. Close again, I'm going to take that sketch and give it a Z separation. Now when I loft through these, using the loft, and then add section, you notice something's wrong. If we look, we get a crossover. So the inside has gone to the outside here, and that's because of the order we created those profiles. So we have to make sure we create them in the correct order. And that's by keeping consistent order with each profile. This becomes especially important when we have something like this. Let's put a number of circles in here. So we've got a slot with three circles created from left to right. I'm going to close that and then create another sketch along the XY plane. And we'll do the same. A slot. Just going to hide the other sketch. Press the space bar. And this time, I'm going to go for the middle. the right, and then the left. We'll close that. Make some Z separation. Bring back the other sketch. And we'll off through these now. You see, we get that crossover within. Always important to keep consistent when creating the sketches. Working from outside in, left to right, or whichever way you feel comfortable. Just keep them the same throughout the different sketches through your loft. So I hope you enjoyed those main tips. And I hope they help you make your workflow a lot more quicker and less frustrating when using FreeCAD. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B E Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.